Come on, why are you going there and say, I'm a, I'm a receptor of the things of God. Of things of God. God speaks to me speaks spirit to spirit. To spirit. When God speaks, God speaks, I listen and I obey. And I obey. Doubt, Doubt and unbelief have no place in my life. Doubt and unbelief have no place in my life. Now, I'm going to drop this on you because I dropped it this morning at 8.30 because you need to hear this. Most people, the reason why they don't really receive great financial breakthrough is because we don't stick to our assignment. See, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So if Satan will pay you to sin, see, some of y'all mind went straight to the club, straight to the strip pole. Straight, your mind went straight there. Satan will pay you to sin, the liquor store, the dope house. How much more will God pay you if you stick to your assignment? Now, you don't have to be no preacher to be a witness. So God wants to pay you to be a witness, to point people not to your church, but to him. Even though you got a good church, but the main thing is hooking people up with Jesus. Then then stuff starts breaking loose because you walk it in your appointment and your assignment. Now, I want to read this scripture where I started first, then I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. All right, you got it? Ready to read? What, what I told y'all to go? John 15. All right, see, thank you. See, somebody was listening. Did I say it or he didn't know from this morning? Yeah, I did say 15. Now, watch, 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 watch. Okay, okay, okay. Read, oh, let me get my Bible. Three, go to, yeah, go to verse three. So you take good notes. See, that's what you need. Yeah. See, I had to have two things. I still had to have my old one and my new one. I got my slingshot and my sword. <laughs> oh! All right. Well, it's John 15, the gospel. Say, Pastor's about to show me how to get my stuff. See, I got to get back to, I have not known I'm talking about. I, I, I got to get back to the word. Oh, glory, I felt that. Go on, say it with me. Say, Satan, Satan I, command I command you to loose your hold on that, that which belongs to me right now. Come on, one more time. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I command you to loose your hold on that which belongs to me right now. I'm about to give you a prophetic secret. The secret thing, the Bible says in Deuteronomy, belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children's children that we may do all the works of the law. See, I'm about to get this prophetic secret. Verse 3 says, Now, ye are clean through the word which I spoke unto you. That's why the devil doesn't want you getting the word. Yeah. Especially a word of clarity and a word of understanding. Because yeah. that word washes me. Yeah. Now some people have a problem, Junior, with being brainwashed. Yeah. Yeah. But if I'm going to get what God has for me, I have to allow, listen, not, not somebody's philosophy, not subliminal hypnosis, but I have to be what my mind has to be washed by the word of God. Then I have to purpose to come into agreement, just submit to what, and, and, and no, it's not going to be easy because you've been training your flesh to rebel. That's right. And your flesh does not desire to do anything spiritual. Your flesh, you, you know why God don't want you to sin? Because you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Moses said like this in the book, the Bible said, Moses said, I'd rather suffer the afflictions with the people of God rather than to in, enjoy sin for a season. Think about it. When you was doing what you did until you got a revelation that it was halfway killing you, you was having a good time. Touch three people say, keep it real. Man, if you can get all that money back you done spent on them cigarettes, not cigarettes, five or six dollars a pack. All them quarter bags and eight balls and you can get that money back, man, you know how much money you have. Oh, he built. You can build a house. You can build a house. Cash money. <laughs> now, now watch this though. Watch this. Watch this. With that in mind, just think of what you could really do. If you could do that to the negative and realize what you wasted, how much now that you got a new mind that you could still use that productive power? See, you were using, now oh man, I don't know how I got in this, but I'm here, it's good stuff. You were using that creative power that God gave you to get wealth. You just were spending your wealth in the wrong place. Don't get me wrong. I got all kind of kin folks. You got some of your family too. And, and in my younger days, I would pick some of them up that walk the street and do what they do and tell them, look, God, if you're going to do this, you're cheering on not to be hungry and raggedy. If you're going to do this, you need to be focusing. I ain't telling nobody to go do nothing wrong. But you already on the street and your children ain't eating. You're using your money in the wrong direction. You got to flip this thing and start putting it to the positive. Because ain't no sense you being out here and you, you can't pay your rent. And you done made rent money seven times out here on this corner. But you homeless. Ain't had a bath in six days. Then what get me somebody trying to pick you up. I'm Pulling over saying, get in, man, is you crazy? This didn't look like death. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Hart do it good like a medicine. But what I'm trying to get you to see, say, I have creative, I have creative ability, ability inside of me. Inside. I, possess I possess millionaire, millionaire. Potential. potential. Oh, see, some of y'all, see, see, you worshiping but you still in doubt. <laughs> I can just work that. Worshiping and in doubt. You go to the doctor because you think the doctor can help you. You ought to come to God knowing that God. What's my scripture, man? John chapter 3. Now y'all leave me alone while I can teach. What? 3. He said, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. Abide in the word, and the word in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the word. No more can ye, except ye abide in the word. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in the word, and the word in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without the word, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in the word, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. See, you need the word that when the test of times come, you'll have something that'll pull up on the, from the inside of you. Nothing wrong with you being inspired. Nothing wrong with shouting. Nothing wrong with being able to run through the building. Nothing wrong with coming to church and have a good time. But after I leave, I need something that's foundational. Yeah. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? I need some potatoes. I need some, some oatmeal. I need some grits, something that's going to rest down in my belly so that at midday when the sun is hot and I don't have break time, that energy that I got this morning is still fueling me. Yeah. 
Look at three people tell say the word will continue to fuel you. So you, you, your prophetic secret is abiding in that word and stick it to your assignment. Watch this. Go to, go to Acts 9, 1 and 8, because I got to move. I'm trying to get to expectations and roles. Verse 8 said, but ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses for me. Jerusalem, look up, look at me. Your Jerusalem is your immediate family. Now, they don't have to come to your church, but the, the, your Jerusalem, the folk you hang out with. Jerusalem, for us, at first, was just that little area we were over there in Whistler. It say Jerusalem, then what's the next one? I can't hear you, what? Judea. Judea was when we moved across town and went in the building down the hall. Read the next one. Look around. This is like Al Samira. I'm talking about corporately. I'm showing you a prophetic move. But as far as to get your release, you got to start working for God. work for God. I got to feel this commission. I got to be a witness for him. And he will pay me to witness. Every time you get a soul added to the kingdom, it's something happening for you in the spirit. It's a reward attached to every individual you witness to. Now what is witness? Witness is not preaching. Witnessing is no more than just telling folk of the goodness of God and how good he's been to you. Now watch what's going to happen. You start talking about how God bless you, what God did for you. I mean, you know, somebody's going to be trying to follow God. And so go back to uh, uh, Matthew 28, and I'm going to show you this again. See, the Lord, the Lord doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't move off our need. No, since you, you, you know, he has compassion. He loves you, but he, he's not going to move because you have a need. Your heavenly father knoweth what things you have need of before. So God is already aware of what I need. That's right. The Lord know I need $2 million over here. Yeah. No sense of me keep talking to him about $2 million. He already knows what it's going to take. So I just go around thanking him Amen. that it's already done. Amen. Right. I just act like it's already so. Now, whether it comes, what is it, 12 months, 60 months, 72 months, or 84 months, long as we get there, That's right. if we had to get there one step at a time, give us this day our daily bread. Now, I sure would like to see him come on up in here with the briefcase with all the money. Let's do it. Get it over with right. We'll boom. But I let him. He's God. I trust him. He already know what the need is. It's my job just to continue to point people to Jesus. That's right. 28. Here we go. Watch this. Some of y'all come to church, lead cheering on the street. When all you had to do was Friday when you got home from work, tell them, look, I want to bring them to Sunday school. Is that all right? Can you have them ready for me Sunday morning, 9 o'clock? I'll bring them to Sunday school. See, we don't do that no more. We've gotten so isolated till we only concerned with me, my four, no more. As long as my house all right, we good. As long as my children praying, as long as my children baptized. What about all these other people you see and you know I'm perishing? Like when the hurricane hits, you ever notice how people come together? 
Folks started talking who was the enemy. They started telling each other, well, they got ice over here. They're going to have a food truck down here. They turn the lights on three blocks from here. They say it's going to be, well, what's going on? We got some communication. We witnessing. We're trying to share the good news about what's going on. If there's good things going on in your life, really, I'm going to say it just like that, Holy Ghost. Yes, I'll, but man, for God said, you need to quit talking about all the bad stuff and just start talking about all the good stuff God is doing. Because in this life, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, watch this hook. If you abide in me, Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. If you abide in me, you already overcome it. 